Hi Sagittarius, welcome to your reading for September 2024. Um, this is going to be for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising. Uh, those intuitively guided, thank you for paying attention to your intuition. Um, you could certainly be in love with the Sagittarius, platonically, romantically. And as many of you know, I read through my guides, my spirit guides. So, um, and I feel like they're I don't feel like I know that my guides connect with yours. That's why sometimes a reading, you may find it, um, you know, like months or even years after it was created, but it just feels like the right time for you. That's what I call divine timing. Um, you know, it'll reach it. You'll find it just in the right time. But anyways, the reason why I'm saying that is your guides know you're here. So um, they're going to, send you signs and messages any way they can and i'm happy to be the vessel for them so let's go ahead and um get into your reading so this month um which probably many of you already know um what i decided to do instead of going like in order i always started the birthday month so i did virgo and then i normally just go to libra scorpio you know around like around the clock um, but this month, I felt intuitively guided to do opposites. So um, your opposite would be Gemini. Um, I'm doing yours first, and then I'll do Gemini's after. And one of the main reasons, you know, I'm really loving doing it this way. I can see the synchronicities. Um, but one of the main reasons is because, you know, what like I'm a Virgo and Pisces is my opposite and I can certainly learn a lot from Pisces and Percy, Pisces can certainly learn a lot from Virgo. So it's kind of like, you know, what we're missing, they have. Um, so that's why I'm doing this and I, I'm just loving it. I'm loving it. We're also bringing back the major arcanas for the month. Um, I'm also loving these and I'm using these really for bullet points. These, um, you know, I think I split this deck up years and years and years ago. Um, so long ago that I can't even really remember. But what I use them for is really just to give us like bullet points on what the reading may be about. We, you know, um, you know, just that message that really hits home. So, we are going to start with Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom. For your clarifiers, or to go deeper, we're going to use the Gilded Tarot. And the Psychic Tarot, not a deck I use for you that often, um, was really calling for you. So, the Psychic Tarot is what we'll use for your main spread. But, let's go ahead and start with Mother Mary. I'm going to give them a couple shuffles. And by the way, everything is always pre-shuffled. Those who have been with me know that. Um, those who are new, welcome. Welcome to everyone. Let's go ahead and give them a cut. And let's begin. Actually, let me bring the lid down a little bit. A little bit more. There we go. All right, Mother Mary, Sagittarius, and those intuitively guided your words of wisdom. All right, and I may take another one after the reading. It just seems like um, what's been called for, so we'll definitely see. Caring, caring. Heaven cares for me, and I keep my heart open to caring about myself others and the world you know boy does the world need it right now so caring about yourself first and foremost others and the world okay let's go ahead and bring in the um major arcanas i'm going to just give them a little shuffle just give them a cut And I'm shooting for, I don't know, three, maybe four cards. 
But whatever comes out is what we're going to take. But I want at least three. So let's go ahead and begin the tar the um, tarot portion. We have the Hermit. Um, I'm not really reading these as people. It's more the energy, but I will say it is a card of Virgo. And we'll talk about it after we get all the cards out. Okay, well, you got a few. Hmm. Well, hello, lovers. I have to say the lovers has been coming out a lot. And you know what's interesting? Um, who's, I just did Taurus this reading, um, and Scorpio is their opposite, and both of them, um, receive the lovers in the exact same position you're receiving the lovers. Also interesting is these are two cards of, uh, two, two energies that's ruled by Mercury, and I believe Mercury is still in retrograde, um, Virgo and Gemini. Judgment. That's your spiritual team. Oh, you got five. The world. A new chapter. You know, it kind of makes sense that a new chapter is opening up with the hermit opening up this reading. Because the hermit is a number nine. And um, I feel like nines are about like reflection, but final reflection. So for some of you, this could talk about like an end of a chapter. And a new chapter is opening up. You know, it's interesting how judgment, judgment's trumpet, which judgment, again, is your spiritual team. But judgment's calling you to the present moment. Um, and there's a reason. It's about a rebirth. You know, do you have to accept it? I don't know. Like, you have free will. But I definitely feel like, just look at the size of the trumpet. Like, Sagittarius, I need you in the current. I need you in the present moment. Why? Because there's a new chapter opening up. That's probably why I felt the hermit as like, again, the final reflection of something. And then look at this. We have the death card. So it is a closing of a door. Um, it's interesting because judgment and the death card both speak about a rebirth. It is a card of Scorpio. You have gotten the most of the major arcanas so far. So I have a feeling they're gonna they're telling their own little story. So we have the death card that's mirroring the hermit. The hermit to me talks about a few different things. Um, you know, in the hermit's energy, you certainly could have gone through, you know, what's called the dark night of the soul. It just means like, you know, some type of experience that really, it, listen, it could have brought you to your knees, you know, um, could have been something that, you know, you really, I don't know, maybe I didn't even want to reflect upon it, but I had no choice. I often feel in the hermit's energy, what I'm seeking is the light, you know, maybe like a savior. And really what the hermit figures out is I am the light. I carry my own light. I am my own savior. Um, I feel like the hermit is like an old soul and has the wisdom, you know, once, once they find their way out of this dark night and they do, that's what the, that's what that beacon of light is about. And I love how the hermit is shining the light, that beacon of light over to the lovers and by the way, judgment is also looking back at the lovers. The death card's even looking back. But the death card's looking right over at the world. So anyways, it's like, for some of you, I feel like, I feel like you've probably been in this state of reflection. And um, it feels like, if nothing else, it's time. Like, it's, it's time to allow yourself to begin a new chapter. And it doesn't have to mean in all areas of your life. But again, I do feel like the hermit, you know, I, I just feel like with the hermit's energy, like I've been here before. I've been through this before. What I'm realizing um, as I go through, 
you know, the darkness is that my soul knows the way out. You know, again, you're a spiritual being of inhuman experiences. The hermit is gaining that wisdom. And then the hermit, I feel like, is also a natural healer. And listen, maybe I don't even realize that until I myself go through that energy. And interesting, again, that the hermit and the lovers both share Mercury. Can talk about some type of communication. You know, your spiritual team is calling you to the present moment. So, you know, I feel like there must be signs. This reading may be your sign, but I have a feeling it'll be more than one sign. Um, but I have a feeling you also probably have been getting your own signs. Why? Because the world is here. Because the next chapter wants to begin. And you know what? The world, to me, is a very spiritual time in your life. Um, it's really where you have found your spirituality. It is the closest, you know, the closest energy to God. It is the last tarot card. That's why I say that. It is like... I feel like whatever I'm gaining um, in this world's energy, this is something that probably stays with me um, at least through this lifetime, if not for eternity. So the death card is saying, maybe it's saying like, you know, there is a chapter that's coming to an end. You have been reflecting upon it and maybe you know enough now. You know, sometimes we're looking for all the answers, but sometimes we can't really find those answers until we start moving into the next chapter. Rebirth. Rebirth. Closing of the door. The world chapter opens. That's exactly what Judgment's also saying. Everyone seems to be looking back at the lovers. You know, and the one thing I've really noticed about the lovers in this deck is it's like they're almost holding hands this is about the angels influence over these lovers um you know like when you see the devil card in a lot of the tarot decks you'll see like uh the devil's influence over these lovers but here this is the angels influence over them you know it's like cupid is getting ready to you know strike that arrow To me, this feels like a very good omen. But we'll see what brings you to this exact place. This ex exact place, this exact time, it feels like divine timing. But again, you do have free will. So it really is up to me to close that door, whatever it may be. And again, I do feel like for some of you, it's it's an energy that may felt like the dark night of the soul. But really, I feel what you're the realization that you're having is how much stronger I am now because of that. And we don't realize it when we're in it. But if we are seeking spiritual guidance, and that's what the hermit's really doing, um, spiritual guidance, but for this earthly plane. And I definitely feel like you're receiving it. Not only that, I feel like then you are shining that beacon of light for others. You know, let that healer part of yourself come out. That could be why Mother Mary... Right out caring, right? I care for myself. First of all, heaven cares for you. But caring for yourself, others, and the world. And we literally have the world here. Got the whole world in your hands. You got the whole world in your hands. You know, the death guard has like this sickle, like, like literally cutting those ties. Whoa. I liked how they just flipped over like that. Just like a feather. 
All right. Well, nice. We open up with what's called light in this deck. This is the sun. You know, I have to say, I kind of love this coming under the hermit's energy because it does feel like this is you coming out the other end. This is you like claiming victory. Like I have found that light. The sun is really illumination. Um, and by the way, you know, no shadows can hide when the sun is out. What's ever done in the dark will come to the light. Also card of Leo. You have, well, material and spiritual prosperity. Material and spiritual prosperity. There's growth here. There's growth. You know, it's like you're having an awakening. After a difficult time. Some of you may be taking your very experiences and creating a business from that. And again, I feel that healing energy. Um, but I feel like the healing energy you can really use anywhere in, in any type of business. It just feels like it will become like your natural, like you're just just your natural energy. But uh, judgment, rebirth, spiritual and material prosperity, the sun, you know, the sun is like a brand new day. Um, I feel like when the sun comes out, it's talking about, and just the way the cards came out, they was like, they, they, they turned around and then came down like a feather, nice and light. So, this could be a period of time where it really is going to be joyful. There is going to be a lot of laughter, probably a lot of love. There's definitely going to be a lot of prosperity. All right, we're going to turn these around. We have the Hermit again. Called Solitude in this deck. And then we have the Two of Swords. Mental Conflict in this deck. This mental conflict is mirroring the sun. I'm going to slide these over. You know, the, the two swords is about a blindfold. Like, I may have a blindfold on, but I feel like the sun, whatever, whatever I may be, f f like, fearful of facing, it's almost like the sun is saying you don't need to be fearful. And I also feel like any time that you've been spending alone lately, I don't feel like it's been wasted time, even if it's been difficult. I, because I feel like the truth of the matter is, this is really what has helped grow your spirituality. And for some of you, this is what may be creating a path of material prosperity. So I feel like that blindfold... Come here right under the death card. You know, I may be a little leery of closing a certain door. I get it. You know, we, we've all been there. But then again, I feel like with the sun, it's almost like I can't deny that that door does need to be closed. Now, that could be an energetic door. It could be the way I'm thinking, like within my thought system. It could be the cutting ties with someone. Maybe you already have, you know, and maybe you have spent some time alone. But again, I don't feel like it was wasted. Solitude, I, I feel like, even though you're a fire sign, so, you know, me as a Virgo, like, I, I don't mind this solitude. Like, I find this is when I'm, I'm really my most creative. This is when all kinds of epiphanies and ideas come to me. So I know it's not a waste of time, but you being a fire sign, you know, you may not enjoy that solitude quite as much. But listen, judgment is saying, well, that time is ending. And now I feel like with, with material and spiritual prosperity, it may be time to get to work. It may be time to like start thinking about your future. You know, and taking the blindfold off and face them, whatever you need to face. Again, the sun's not going to allow you to hide it from yourself. 
but you can deny it. But I feel like you can't hide it. Whether that be a person, you know, that just really is uh, probably not at the same vibration as me, as me, whether it be my own thought system. But I feel like, you know, with the Hermit here twice, double Virgo, by the way, that's my boyfriend, double Virgo. Um, but anyway, um, a lot of Mercury on the table also. Interesting. So communication may have been rough for a while. You know, I feel like that two of swords, it's really the only energy here right now where, you know, I may be just, I don't know, like denying something or not wanting to face something. But everything else is really quite beautiful. And the two of swords is not the worst energy. The eight of swords, that's a self-created prison. Two of swords, it just may be something I just... You know, I might be fearful of facing, and maybe that is, again, like, I know I need to close this door. We have, interesting, we have double Leo. This is a strength card. Um, but look at what it's called here, power. This is really where someone really has gone deep. You know, the strength card to me talks about, you know, our shadow side and also our light side. And, you know, what what have I been, which one have I been feeding? This is a number eight. So an eight does speak about a new beginning. It's also a number of infinity as above, so below. You know, something may be opening up that is just destined. But maybe it was about you really finding this courage, realizing your power. Interesting how we have double Virgo and double Leo. We have obstacles and challenges. Right next to the strength card. Now, it's a number five. And five does ask for a change. So, you know, maybe I have been dealing with some obstacles. Maybe I didn't think I could get through them. And that could be a little bit again of that two of swords. But everything here is saying, but you can. And you will. You know, consider this change. Whatever it may mean for you. Like, consider... The change may be needed to really, you know, I feel like give you the life that you want to really bring in this the material and spiritual prosperity. Like your spiritual team is here to help you, no doubt. And because it's coming next to the strength card, I feel like whatever obstacles or challenges were there, I do feel like you you can definitely overcome and look at that. The Ace of Wands, inspired action. Here it says passion ignited. Someone's heart chakra is being activated. You know, the Ace of Wands, um, it is an energy of action. But first you feel it. You know, it, it literally does feel like your heart chakra is being activated. And that could tie us back to the lovers. Or whatever it may be. You know, I feel like it's a good sign that you're starting on. Let's say you're starting this new journey. Um, that you're on the right path. Just allow yourself to feel that. You know, it just kind of feels like hard days are coming to an end. And then we have sacrifice. Sacrifice. Under the two of swords. Under the death card. Something may have, may, 
something may have needed to be sacrificed. Maybe I didn't think I wanted to. Maybe I didn't think I was ready to. You know, and again, this can talk about, it can certainly talk about another person. But with the strength card here, I also feel like this is something, you know, deep within yourself. There's my son's birthday. 8-12. See what's on the bottom of the deck? All right. So the tower. That's what put you in the hermit's energy. Um, you know, I feel like the tower is one of those energies that we fear. But yet, I feel like when time passes by, we look back at this tower and we're like, thank God. Thank God this tower moment happened. Here it's called disruption. It can certainly talk about someone falling from grace. But it, it does mean an ending. You know, the tower can represent something I didn't plan for. But yet, it still happened. We have accelerated motion underneath that. Mm. Maybe I was trying to move something too quickly. And the hermit's energy is like slowing it down. You know, towers on the bottom of the deck. And I feel like what that means is, I feel like the tower and the two swords are connected. I feel like the tower and sacrifice are connected. But I also feel like the death card and sacrifice are connected. So even if I didn't want this tower, if this tower is what sent me into, let's again say the dark night is a soul. Look what's opening up. This is about a new chapter. This is about present moment energy. This is past energy. This has already happened. This is new energy. This is current energy, but it's literally opening, opening up the next chapter for you. And then this Ace of Wands, you know, inspired action, passion ignited for what? Well, for some of you, the lovers. And I'm not just going to say the lovers because I feel like there's also, um, you know, like I feel like you're your money or what you do in the world. You know, I feel like there's more clarity. Um, you're trusting yourself more. I feel like I'm not going to allow the tower. And this probably takes time. And that may be why, again, it says solitude. I may have, you know, had to spend some time to understand this energy. And again, I may have tried to push something sooner than it was meant to be, let's just say. All right, let's bring the Gilded Chiro in. And let's go ahead and start going deeper. Give it a couple shuffles. You know, anytime the sun shows up in a reading, I feel like, I feel like brighter days are ahead. Anytime the world shows up in a reading, I feel like if this is talking about a new chapter, which I do feel like it is, um, I don't feel like there's anything to fear here. You know, maybe what the death card, the closing of a door, it may talk about again, this tower and not allowing that tower to have any more effect um, in your present or future. You know, we've all had them. All right. So we're going to start at the beginning, but we are going to read it as a whole. We 
we have the seven of wands seven of wands is the energy of standing your ground but it's also the energy of putting out other people's fires you know i often feel in this energy like i put out one fire and another fire begins so i put that fire out and another one you know standing your ground yes but also knowing like what am i standing my ground against is it worth it? We have mm, seven of pentacles. Interesting. You know, I want to talk about the seven of pentacles for a second because it is coming over the lovers, but it's also touching your material and spiritual prosperity. So seven of pentacles to me is like your tree of life. I often relate it to like an apple tree. And that may be why I felt like the tower, maybe I was trying to move something sooner than it was meant to be. Um, because this, this card, is, first and foremost, is about patience. And the reason I related to an apple tree is because I feel like these are your seed souls of intention on this tree. Um, I feel like these are the seeds that are destined to be but each in their own time. So like an apple tree, I'm not going to pick an apple before it's ripe. And if I do, it's just going to be sour, right? It's not going to be any good. But I also feel like this is energy of things that are meant to be. And this may be the right time. To me, it's like there is a seed that's coming to fruition. Now, it is landing over the lovers. And interesting, you have 77 right there. Some of you, you know, it's funny. I should have told you in the beginning, like when, when you watch any of the readings or probably anybody's reading, um, you know, definitely ask your guides to give you confirmation. Like, is this reading for me? They'll give you a sign. You know, you can ask for a certain word or number or you just like get angel bumps you know, that is like validation for you. Look at this. Ace of Cups. Right over judgment. Calling you to the present moment. Talking about a rebirth. And it's talking about love. Now, it doesn't have to be just romantic love, though. With the lovers here, I kind of feel it is. Um, it can also be a love of what I do, you know, loving my life again. It's definitely your spiritual team sending you love, but I feel like they're trying to, they're trying to give you a sign that, you know, again, in that tower, you know, maybe there's someone that I wanted to love me, but they didn't, or they didn't know how, you know. But judgment's like, but here's your love. Here's your ace. You have two aces already. Ace of wands first. And I feel like that's so you can feel this energy, maybe before it even arrives. It's like your heart, your heart chakra is being activated. Potentially getting you ready. And listen, to really accept love. If love hadn't, hasn't gone, let's just say, right in the past, it could be harder for me to accept love then. Hmm. We have the Page of Pentacles. And then we have the King of Swords. Uh, King of Swords can be a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, can be your opposite sign. Um, but it doesn't have to be any of that. Let me tell you what the King of Swords represents to me in the upright. This is someone who um, lives within their integrity. This is someone who speaks the truth. However, this king is coming not only over the death card, but also over mental conflict. 
This could be someone who, you know, just couldn't give you what you needed. But maybe, you know, sometimes I feel like, especially with the Page of Pentacles here, I feel like this talks about a path of knowledge, like what I am learning um, as I move along, you know, this lifetime. The wisdom that I'm gaining. And I feel like because it's coming over the world and solitude, you're definitely gaining. Some of you, I feel like um, you're even potentially thinking of bringing things that, you know, you could have gone to school for. And maybe they were put on the back burner. And now I feel like your spirituality is really like awakening. And that alone gives you more clarity. I feel like this is saying trust. Trust in what you know. Like, and it doesn't have to be like what I know from books. I know what I know what I know. Right? That's on a spiritual level. I know what I know. Like someone would be like, how do you know that? I just know it. I just know it. Um, also, I, you know, I can't help but notice that the page of pentacles is coming over the card of her, of, of, of hermit, of the hermit, um, card of Virgo. This could certainly talk about someone's younger energy and their energy today. You know, we'll come back and look at that king of swords, but I'm kind of getting a feeling like, you know, first I was building him up like someone of integrity, someone who tells the truth. But yet I feel like there's confusion around this king. You know, the death card is like carrying that sickle. You know, maybe even sacrifice here. Maybe like I needed to sacrifice that energy. Why? So that when my heart chakra is activated, when this trumpet is blown, again, looking right back at the lovers, that's bringing out this Ace of Cups, it's bringing out this next chapter, I'm much more easily able to move into it. You know, it feels like the difference of restrictive love and true love. Restrictive didn't go my way. Maybe I wanted things to move quicker than they did. Maybe this king just wasn't ready. You know, and I feel like it, I know this is going to be hard. Um, like when I say it, I know it's not an easy thing to accept. But sometimes, you know, um, well, let's put it this way. Not all love is meant to last forever. And there are different levels to love. If I've taken this period of solitude seriously, and I really have reflected, and I am receiving spiritual clarity, then, then I really start to understand, let's just say, past love. that didn't work out. Because again, I feel like the day will come when I'm going to look at this tower, and I'm going to be thankful. Because without this tower, maybe my life never would have changed. Maybe this Ace of Cups couldn't have shown up. I wouldn't have been ready for it. You know, sometimes people, we want people to love us, but they just don't know how. And, you know, it's like, how do I say, like, sometimes we have to learn not to take it personally, even though I do know it's very personal. I do know you take it in the heart. But, again, I feel like with judgment bringing out this Ace of Cups, it, it must be of a much higher vibrational love, especially with you doing this reflection especially with the Ace of Cups touching also the lovers. And the Ace of Cups is right next to the Seven of Pentacles, where I feel like one of these seeds, and probably more than one seed, it's like time for it to come to fruition. You know, it's like divine timing. 
Maybe I've been tied to a lower vibrational energy. Again, someone who couldn't love me, right? You know, and and I don't want to just talk about love. It can be like in your work area, you know, like a job where um, you give and you give, but you don't seem to receive the prosperity that, you know, definitely seems like it's meant for you. Maybe I needed to make that change. And I know none of that is easy. Change can be difficult. But I feel like whatever changes you're making, they're only, I feel like they're lifting your vibration, to be honest. You know, and the Page of Pentacles, to me, would also say, um, you know, these destined seeds, let's say, your soul seeds, that are meant to come to fruition at different times. Learning about life, especially the hard times in life, are really, I feel like the hard lessons are what gives us or raises our vibration more than anything, especially when we overcome it. We never long we no longer give the power to the past. All right, well, let's keep going. Hmm, Nine of Swords. Over the Strength card. But again, here it's called Power. You know, this is a lot of worry. For sure. It is another nine, by the way. And listen, this may be how everything started. Right? A lot of worry. Nine of Swords talks about things that really are outside of your control. And Divine would say, you know, there's certain things you cannot control. And those things you can give to me. You know, if I don't look at this energy, it, it definitely affects us. It can affect us in our health. You know, it's almost, I feel kind of like, like, you know, if I was in this state of worry, um, did I, especially coming of the strength card, did I like, you know, that I, I don't know, like, how do I want to say this? You know, did I like drink too much? Cause I didn't want to face the facts. Did I feed my shadow self? Because I, again, what I wanted, I wanted. Yeah, I feel like your spiritual team is is saying, you know, potentially that was a free will choice, let's say. Because I don't feel like love, true love, high vibrational love would put you in this state. So I may have, again, hoped that something worked out. And listen, there could have been someone that kind of left, like, left you hanging on the hook. Who left you in this state of confusion and worry. But this, the meaning of this card is unnecessary worry. And it is a nine. So, yes, reflect, like, what is this worry about? Am I, am I trying to control something that... Truly is outside of my control. Am I trying to love someone who, let's just say potentially, I don't know, almost doesn't feel worth it? Or am I going to allow myself to let go of this and allow these new chapters to open up? You know, in this energy, you, you're not thinking that life's going to get better. But it does. And you only have to look back at your own life to understand that. You know, and I know that from my own experiences. Like, how many times have you been in situations where, you know, you're trying to control some someone or something and it's just not going your way? And the more effort you put towards it, the more distress comes your way. You know, this can turn into a repeat pattern for sure. 
but then eventually you let it go. And then years later, if even years, you look back and you say, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I closed that chapter. I can say that for quite a few chapters in my life. Hello, Ten of Cups. Under the lovers, or mirroring the lovers, I'm sorry. It is, it is over obstacles and challenges. You know, it's interesting because this is a five and this is a ten. And to me, that means evolution. Like evolving. We have the Ace of Cups. We have the Sun. And I feel like the Sun is here to help ease your worries. These past towers, people who didn't love us the way that we had hoped, it does not mean that you cannot find great love if that's what you're looking for. And by the way, I don't even think you need to be looking for it. I really feel like the more that we just think about our own vibration, you know, the more we have the realization that, you know, what am I doing like waiting for someone, waiting for someone to change, you know, putting out someone's like fire after fire. You know, I keep getting these obstacles, these challenges. When am I just going to be like enough is enough? Soon, I hope. Look at this, six of cups. Interesting. Now, this can certainly signify someone that you already know. But it would not be someone who has you in this state of worry. Because this is the opposite energy of that. This is someone, when I think about them, I think, you know, they bring joy to my heart. You know, I often feel, and this is also my story, um, but I often feel like, you know, we can be in a relationship or, or you know, trying to be in a relationship and, and and nothing's going right, right? It's just like worry and and an ego and one obstacle after another. Um, and then at night, we lay our head down on a pillow and our mind goes to this person. And it's coming over the Ace of Wands, where literally it feels like your heart chakra is being activated. It's coming under the world or mirroring the world. A new chapter. So even if I do know this person, I don't think like I definitely don't feel like this is the person who's put you in, the, in a, any type of worry. I don't even had have had a relationship with this person. And this can even talk about past lives. This can also talk about, uh, for some of you, you know, with the sun and the ten of cups, um, you know, some of you could be making a move, moving back to a place where um, you have happy memories of. Maybe for some of you, a place where you went to school. It's a different way of looking at life, for sure. And we will come back and clarify a few of these energies. But let's keep going for the time being. You know, what's what's interesting also is the Six of Cups is also coming over so, um, solitude. So that time I spent alone... Maybe, and even if I'm not alone, it, I'm still, you know, I'm still reflecting in that energy. You know, same as the hermit up here where the hermit's emerging from that cave with its beacon of light now completely lit. And it's illuminating the lovers. We have the Page of Cups. Well, I feel like a page of cups is your inner child. And um, 
I feel like in the Page of Cups, you know, we just want to be loved. And maybe we haven't felt that. Maybe we felt the opposite. And I'm not saying your whole life, but there is a chapter that it's like at least the universe is asking you to consider changing, closing, letting this new chapter open up. And by the way, again, in the world's energy, I feel like it is for the rest of your life. And that would make sense with the Ace of Cups and the Ten of Cups so close together. First of all, the triangle of the Ace of Cups, the Ten of Cups, and the Six of Cups, with the Ace of Wands being the energy that's igniting it all. Just had to learn how to love myself again. You know, I feel like the Page of Cups is also a very playful type energy. And, you know, it's like your natural instinct, your natural child, your net, the, you know, the natural child within you. But it feels like someone kind of had their hooks in you. Hmm. I feel like if this Ace of Cups is talking about love that's coming in, if that's what your spiritual team is talking about, then they're definitely going to let you feel it first. You know, it's almost like that feeling of like, boy, I feel like something good's going to happen. I may not even be able to put a name to it, but I just feel it. First of all, I feel like when we're able to let go of these previous towers, reflect upon them just to a point, not getting lost in them. And, you know, with all these nines, some of you could have become single. But I don't feel like it was waste of time because I feel like it's what has really opened you up. Um, not just to like new love. Not just to like new um, potentials, new adventures, but it's really feels like it's about you loving yourself again, respecting yourself again. And, you know, in a way, believing in miracles. I don't feel like there's anything here that you need to do for this Ace of Cups to come in other then bring your energy to the current moment. Why? Because that's where your signs are set. That's where you're going to feel it. And I feel like the rest will just take place. The rest, you know, it's almost like we don't need your help. We just need you in the present moment. We need you to let go of these past towers. You know, allow yourself to heal. And understand that not everyone's going to treat us the way that we deserve. And vice versa. I mean, we also got to know our own part. But if we think that we can't have the Ten of Cups, well, I mean, if I think I can't have it, am I then not putting that obstacle in front of myself? But when I let go of that, like the Nine of Swords, unnecessary worry, and instead, I put my energy in divine, in divine timing, knowing that some of these seeds are coming to fruition. These apples are becoming ripe. You know, it's interesting because you have the king of swords mirroring the seven of swords, or you have the king of swords mirroring the seven of wands. And that is a lot of ego. And I also want to say that if anyone is doing something, let's say, against you, they won't be able to hide it because the sun will bring it to the light. But you do need to take off that blindfold in the same 
breath. And then you have the Page of Cups mirroring that Nine of Swords. So I feel like someone has affected that inner child of you. You know, that playfulness part, that playful part of yourself. And instead, I've gone into like worry. All right. I want to look at a few of these things. You know what I think I want to do first? So I'm going to move everything up a little bit. And I'm going to go right below. You know, Sagittarius, what if you were with someone who really put you in this state of worry, who really made you stand your ground over and over and over again? And what if it was meant to come to an end? And this end gives me the opportunity or it gives the universe the opportunity to allow the seed of intention that feels like now it's the right time. And what it produces is the Ace of Cups. Would I then look at this in a different way? We have the Queen of Pentacles, can be a Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. But you know, it's interesting how I said, look at this in a different way, because I often call the Queen of Pentacles my psychic detective. And um, in a reading like this, I feel like you're all people. and Like, like I don't feel like you're the King of Swords. But I do feel like, and I don't feel like you're, I do feel like you may be one of the people in the Six of Cups, but I feel like you're someone else in there also. Same with the lovers. I feel like you're one of the people and then there's someone else. But my what I was saying is, what if I look at this in a, in a different light, in a different way? And this is a queen that, again, I call my psychic detective. Why? Because she's so, she's someone who really learns how to read energy. She's someone who can read between the lines. And if someone is, let's just say, was, because I feel like, I feel like for the majority of you, I do feel like whatever was has probably ended. It's just now me ending it energetically. You know, I feel like if anyone has done anything against you, like in the dark, it, it is coming to the light. Or it has come to the light. And this is the person that would see it. Now, I also want to say, this Queen of Pentacles can certainly overthink. And that could be part of it also, right? But the overthinking is the overworrying. The overthinking is the reason why I have the blindfold on. You know, something I just may not want to face. You know, if someone's not being, let's just say, faithful, wouldn't you rather know that? Even though I know it's hurtful. I've been there. But in the same breath, by knowing that, it, it, it almost like, for the majority of us, it's like, okay, well, that's going to put an end to it. You know, I can relate this back to like when I, um, you know, I always say my first marriage. I've only been married once. Um, but, you know, like if I never closed that door and that person was a cheater and a liar. I mean, really. To the extremes. 
And, you know, I did want to deny it until I could no longer deny it. And today I would think, you know, could I even imagine myself in that same life? No. No. I couldn't. And I get the Six of Cups with the Ace of Cups and the Ace of Wands. You know, it's, it, you know it, it's hard not to talk about my life stories because I see them here. Um, and, you know, like Sam and I being together, it was all completely unexpected to me. Just the way he reached out 40 years after the fact. That's kind of what the Six of Cups to me is. So, am I glad that I closed those old chapters? You're damn right I am. All right, well, let's keep going. We have the Six of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles. You know, Six of Pentacles is that fine art of give and take. Who have I been given to? And am I receiving? There's nothing wrong with the receiving. You're meant to receive. You know, it's I don't give just so I receive. But if I'm giving and giving and giving and not receiving anything in return, but these challenges, I need to face that. You know, this is a very empathetic soul. So it's naturally, you know, naturally I want to give. But I can only do that for so long. This is someone who is empathetic and does care about their fellow man. Just like Mother Mary is asking you to, right? But she's also asking you to care about yourself first. You know, it reminds me of like, you know, if you're a mother and you don't care about your own health and your own well-being, you know, are you really serving your children? Um, and listen, I never would tell someone like, go get a divorce. But let's just say that you yourself, you know, it reminds me of someone who left a comment where she was so miserable. Um, her husband was cheating and lying and she knew that. Um, her husband was like seeing other people, but she didn't want to leave for the children. You know, I mean, and that is your personal choice. And, I, uh, you know, it's not up to me to say, well, you should leave that. But I feel like judgment is saying, you know, it, let me put it this way. I remember when I was I was young and my parents would get into horrible fights and I remember sitting, us kids would sit on the steps um, and just cry and cry. And then I remember when my parents got divorced, it was very hard. I was 13. But fighting stopped. It stopped. And then I remember when I was in my 20s, when my dad said to me, because my dad ended up leaving the house and I was a daddy's girl. And he said, I should have never left you kid. Yeah, I should have never left you kids. And I said to him, Dad, you did the right thing. You don't know how how hard it was for us. And I don't even know why I'm telling you this story. Maybe to help give some of you confirmation. I don't know. You know, in the Six of Cups, I could definitely see someone being like a teacher, social work, healers, um, in all different formats, Reiki, all of that. Um, but I may have just given my energy also away to the wrong people or the wrong person. You know, someone who, when I give a hand out, it doesn't give them a hand up. 
They just use it to their own benefit. And now I'm learning that when I give a hand out, I'm doing it so that, so that I can actually lift someone. All right. You know, it almost feels like there's nothing you need to change about yourself except have the realization of the things that you're accepting, you know, and that's free will. Strength card again. Look at that. We have a lot of Leo on the board. We have a lot of Virgo on the board. We also have a lot of love on the board. You know, I'm just going to say that I would not be surprised if, as you're going through, let's just say some deep reflections, someone may reach out that you may totally not expect. Now, part of me feels like for some of you, you probably know who this is. But again, I'm, I still don't feel like you would expect it. I feel like you would feel it. And I feel like that's what judgment is saying. Like, that's why we need your energy in the current moment. That's why we need you to close this door. You know, and if I've been in this state of reflection, I feel like it's saying, you know, don't, don't get stuck in that reflection. It's about final reflection. You know, that nine, final reflection, and then into the death card, and then that closing of the door. But I also wouldn't be surprised if, you know, you could still be in somewhat of a hurt state, but yet someone is introduced back into your life or into your life. I just would not be surprised. That feels like how it's reading to me. You know, if I'm someone who gives and gives and gives, you don't need to change you. You just need to know who you're giving to. Like, this is you being very empathetic and compassionate. And don't let someone take that away from you but also have the realization of who am I giving it to? Hmm. Justice. So this is cutting in ties. Carta Libra, first of all. But listen. When I see justice in a reading, I do feel like it's cutting your ties because it's mirroring the death card. But I also feel like what it really is talking about is, is balance in your life again. You know, it's coming over the image of sacrifice. But the two swords is right above it. So, some of you could talk about karmic ties. Especially with the Page of Pentacles here. There could have been, you know, a great lesson for your soul. And when I reflect upon it, maybe I start to realize that. And again, it's not about ch shutting yourself down. Like, don't close off that compassionate side of yourself. And that may be why the Queen of Pentacles is coming next to it. Because she knows, you know, like again, she can read between the lines. And then look at this. It's like I cut those ties and boom. Ace of Wands again. And then look at this. The Nine of Pentacles. Another Virgo card, by the way. Holy Virgo, Holy Leo. But this is about your independence. You know, we began this reading with you receiving material and spiritual prosperity. Well, here's your material prosperity. For some of you, I feel like it's taking all these lessons and using them in your daily life to create, you know, this is this, the meaning of this card is successful self-employment. 
Now, I don't always feel like it has to be self-employment, but let me tell you who the, the sole benefactor of this energy is, you. This is someone who now feels very independent. In the Nine of Swords, I don't feel like you feel that independent. You're a little shaky. Things are changing. Things are changing. That door that your spiritual team is asking you to close. Look at the benefits of closing it. Look at everything that's opening up. You know, it's like it's showing you. You know, when I said that, that, that I felt like there was more than one seed coming to fruition, well, now I know I was right. Because I feel like, and listen, I feel like the more that I eliminate the Nine of Swords energy, eliminate, like, you know, someone else's ego, and just live my life, the more I feel like your spirituality opens, the more opportunities I feel that, that find you, and you find them. And that Ace of Wands right before this. This is feeling independent. This is the ability to stand on your own two feet. And I have to say, I feel like once you reach this energy, you never leave it. Like, there's no way I'm going to lower my vibration. You know, I know I work too hard to reach this energy. Wow. I can't help but think of this king, of, the king of swords. And it's interesting how I said, you know, it's a king of integrity. But listen, not everybody lives in their natural vibration. Not everybody is of a high vibration, including ourselves. You know, it's it's really that learning. Um, you know, it's learning that we're spiritual beings and that we don't have to get stuck in these situations that really just aren't doing us any favors. Quite the opposite. Like, really, it feels like holding you back. Holding you back from allowing this next chapter to open. And everything in this next chapter is, you know, loving and abundant. And I'm not going to say, like, it's all immediate. But it's, it's putting you on that path. You know, justice so close to that six of cups and the ace of wands. And I felt this, I feel this a lot, especially with the ace of cups above it. You know, I could be changing my status on like social media from, you know, in a relationship or it's complicated to single. And that may be a symbol, well, to someone. Could be someone who's on your social media or follows you. Um, like an old friend, um, you know, maybe someone had a crush on you, maybe someone you had a crush on. But what I'm saying is that it's like telling the universe, okay, I'm free and clear now. And justice is like, that's all, or I mean, uh, judgment is like, that's just what we've been waiting for. Let's not forget what the hermit and judgment are both looking at the lovers. with the ace of cups and right under the lovers seven of pentacles your soul seed of intention probably two people's souls of intention the ten of cups to me that means great potential and i feel like there's nothing you need to change about yourself i shouldn't say nothing you know like you know what you need to change I feel like really the only thing I feel like you need to change is not giving your power away to anyone who disrespects you anyway. You know, not telling the universe like, ah, life is never going to be good when everything is showing you the opposite. And really, it's a tiny little blindfold. That kind of holding that back, but the sun is your illuminator. 
you know, it's funny because I said I'm going to go back and clarify, but I feel like, really? I don't feel like I need to clarify anything at this point. I feel like everything is very, very clear. So, I think what I'm going to do, because really, I just don't feel like I need to clarify anything. I'm just going to take a couple cards right down the middle of the spread. And for any other messages that want to come out that maybe I missed, um, or another message that maybe still wants to come out, now's the time. Beautiful. The Empress. Beautiful. First of all, this is the mother figure. This is someone who's lived a lot of life. This is someone who's learned so much. Mainly about herself. This is someone who has learned not to shut her heart down. Right? She's loving and nurturing. But because of her experiences, she's also very powerful. And you have that energy on the board, the power. This is someone whose vibration, you know, is of a higher vibration. And she won't accept anything less. She's someone if, let's just say, whoever put you in that state of worry, let's say they come around again. And you know, the Empress would feel it, that they're of a low vibration. You wouldn't even consider it. You know, it's like the universe is trying to remind you who you really are. The power you truly have. Hmm. Eight of Swords. I was kind of hoping not to see that. But that is a self-created prison. But listen, I feel like I feel like that can't still be because the Empress is here. So I feel like this is the energy, you know, where maybe I have been holding myself back. And you know, the Eight of Swords coming next to the Empress, completely, totally different energies. Eight of Swords is where I'm putting up walls, right? I'm trying to protect myself. From, let's just say future worry, future pain. But the truth of the matter is, I can't really read energy in this in this in this type of energy. You know, I can't really. It's hard. It's it would be hard for me to know the difference. But with the Empress here, again, she doesn't need these walls. That's what she's learned. Like it's my intuition that tells me, and I don't second guess it anymore. Look at this, the Nine of Cups, Inner Harmony. So I feel like a lot of you are setting yourselves free. And you are finding that Inner Harmony, and that's a great thing. And the Nine of Cups is also about fulfillment of a wish, or wishes. Three Swords. Five of Wands. Look at that. So that three, and sword, that three swords and the five of wands coming out. You know, five of wands is a lot of drama. And we can relate that back to the seven of wands. A lot of fighting that results in heartache. You know, what I often feel in the five of wands is whoever, um, whoever is causing this drama, the one thing I want to be careful of is that I don't allow myself to get pulled into it. Because it's only going to re result back into heartache again. I also feel sometimes I've got to be okay with someone not admitting their part. You know, like sometimes people are not going to apologize for breaking your heart. But the Empress doesn't need that. The Empress has moved on. The Knight of Wands. Dun, 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 here I come. So this is about passion, desire, 
And this is what's coming in. Under the Empress. Look at this. Beautiful. The Eight of Cups. So you did free yourself. This is looking within that emotional house. You know, and this person's leaving that Eight of Cups. And where are they heading? To that Nine of Cups. So those cups have been knocked over. That have broken my heart that I've given so much worry and time to, I start to realize that there is a better life out there for me. There are better people out there for me. But I have to play my part and just be willing to know when enough is enough. And then look at this, the Six of Swords. There you are, moving away from it all. You know, you have to look back one card with the Six of Swords, and that's a Five of Swords. That's toxicity. That is toxic energy, toxic people, toxic vibrations. And what did it result in? The Three of Swords, a lot of ego. And this is you saying, no more. No more. I've had enough. And that alone is opening up these new chapters. I feel like a lot of this, you're not even going to expect, but I feel like because your own vibration is now lifting, it's like your spiritual team is saying, oh, you're ready now. You're ready now. You're ready for really, you know, for these seeds to come to fruition. And again, it's over the lovers. It's next to the Ace of Cups. We have the Ten of Cups here. We have the Empress who's reclaiming her power. Goodbye, Nine of Swords. Hello, Independence. And hello, Love. Wow. Three Cups on the bottom of this deck. This is the energy of joy. This is a reason to celebrate. So, that tower, that disruption, that heartache, that ego, that fighting, that was then. This is about, this is about what's next. You know, this is real life. And this is why my readings are long. Because I feel like it would be a shame if I only brought you out like the beautiful cards, but then, but then didn't show you how to actually reach it. This is why my readings are long. I feel like it takes time, right? We have to reflect on all the different, you know, avenues in our life. You know, where are we giving our power away? Why? How can we reclaim it? And what happens once we do? I feel like your spiritual team did a great job here in just showing you how life can change just like that. And when I say just like that, I speak that from experience also. All right, I'm going to take Mother Mary over the reading now. Well, there's joy. There's joy. Oh, my. Hello, love. Hello, love. Love is the answer to all of my questions. Sometimes love works against us. But sometimes love is in our favor. You know, I definitely feel like this is talking about love. But it's the higher vibrational love. And I definitely feel like with the Ten of Cups here also, 
This is talking about love that I feel like will be for the rest of your life. You know, it feels like soulmate love. But it feels like all of it was happening in divine timing. But I do feel like you had a big part to play in that. And joy. Love and joy. Versus worry and heartache. Love and joy. By enjoying this moment, that's exactly what judgment is asking. By enjoying this moment, I'm giving thanks to God for my life. You know, the more things that we're grateful for, I feel like the more things that we have to be grateful for. The universe is working with us hand in hand. But we have to also do our part. You know, it's like looking at this reading from a spiritual point of view and understanding that you are having human experiences. And these human experiences are there to help your soul evolve. And listen, for some of you, like you're taking these experiences and you're creating a new path for yourself, both in your money, but also in love. And I feel like, you know, it's almost like, like when this love enters, I see the difference immediately. I feel the difference. And I wouldn't have known the difference had I not experienced this lower vibration. You know, that's what the Empress is about. She's just not naturally powerful. She, it's through her experiences that she reaches that energy. And then she just wants to share it with the world. Love and joy. Caring. I care about myself. Others. And the world. Wow. I feel like Mother Mary has been the cherry on top of this reading. And I'm going to leave it there. Um, as always, I cannot wait to read your comments. Um, and I read every single comment. I never skip a comment. Um, and I also love how you help each other in the comment section. Because again, some are, going to, are still going to be in this Nine of Swords energy and maybe can't you know are going to have a hard time believing that this can open up for them i can tell you from my own life experiences i have been in that dark night of the soul more than once but i have also come out of it and i feel like you know the things that have opened to me now at this time in my life first of all i didn't expect any of it but here I am now living it. And that's why I'm saying I feel like your comments are so important um, because I feel like, you you know, you are natural healer. So through your words, I feel like you can help others. And I feel like that's our job. That's our purpose. To help those who are still experiencing what we have I'm out of ourselves. Okay. I'm going to let that be, guys. Um, what a reading. You know, I've been saying that for the, every reading, but holy cow, every reading has been like, I feel like life-changing. But we do have to allow it. All right, guys. I love you. I thank you. Um, I do want to put a reminder out there. I only have two slots left for personal readings because I am going to take a um, a, hi a hiatus in the fall um, just to kind of just allow myself to, I don't know. I don't know what the word is, but um, I'm not going to stop doing readings on YouTube. But um, personal readings, I mean, they're very in-depth. They're like two hours long. Um, so there, you know, a few times a year, I just need to give myself some time off. So I have, um, 
two, maybe three slots left. And then um, I'll probably pick it back up in January. Um, so anyways, I just want to let you know that I love you guys. Um, my prayer for you is that this joy, that this love find you and you find it. I will see you next time at our table. I love you. Bye-bye.